All right, so I have another nonfiction reading strategy for you guys for today. It is our third day of working in nonfiction. So hopefully you've been checking out some nonfiction books on Get Epic or on Reading A to Z, Raz Kids, or hopefully you have some nonfiction books at home that you can use. So today's strategy is called Click or Clunk. And our strategy today is a way for us to monitor or pay attention to our understanding as we read a nonfiction book. So as we are reading, we either will click or clunk a page or an idea or a word that we're reading. When we click, it means go. Yes, I understand what I've read. I understand these words. I don't have any confusion. But clunk means I'm kind of stuck and I need to stop. Either I don't understand a word, I don't understand what the page is trying to tell me. And it's a great strategy for us to use for ourselves to make sure as we read, we don't just read through something even if we don't understand it. So Click and Clunk is a tool, as I said, for self-monitoring or comprehension. Our comprehension is understanding what we read. Right? When we understand everything we're reading, it's click. But if we hit a clunk, which is a word, a phrase, a sentence, an idea, and we're confused, we need to fix that clunk and turn it into a click. Right? So here's just a little uh, chart for us. Click means go, green means go. I understand what I read, it looks right, it sounds right, it makes sense. If I hit a clunk, it means I don't understand what I just read. It doesn't sound right, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't look right, so I need to stop and figure it out. I need to use all of my other reading strategies to help me figure out what is going on in that text. So I have a book for us from Get Epic. And it is about simple machines. And I'm gonna show you with this book how sometimes when we're reading, things click and sometimes they clunk. And how we can use the strategies we've been using all year long to help us turn a clunk into a click. Machines make work easier. Some machines are really simple. You may be surprised. There are six simple machines. A lever is one. It's a bar resting on a fulcrum. So I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna ask myself, I'm gonna check in with my comprehension, does this click or is it a clunk? And I'm gonna actually say that this is a clunk. I have two words here that I might not be familiar with. Lever, Lever. <clears throat> okay, and fulcrum. <clears throat> oh no. <clears throat> So if I'm reading and I don't understand a word or I don't understand what a sentence or a page is telling me, I need to stop and I need to use clues and strategies to help me figure it out. So it's telling me that a lever is a type of simple machine. Right? And then there's this word here, fulcrum, it says it's a bar resting on a fulcrum. So, OK, a lever is a bar. That's what this next sentence is telling me. But then it says it's resting on a fulcrum. I don't know what a fulcrum is. So what I can do is I can actually use the picture to help me. So I see that this is a bar, right? And it's resting on these springs right here. It's resting on this middle piece right here. So if a lever is a bar resting on a fulcrum, I'm thinking that this right here has got to be the fulcrum. It's the part that the bar rests on. Right? And it's this part right here in the middle. So that gives me a little bit of a better understanding of what they're talking about. And now my clunk has turned into a click. <clears throat> levers can move heavy objects. Seesaws are levers. Scissors are a pair of levers. What's another way a lever can help you? So this gives me a little bit of a better understanding. This picture right here, right? He is actually showing me a lever and I can see that he has this bar in his hand and underneath the bar is the triangle. And that triangle is actually going to be that fulcrum that they were talking about. So now as I turn to the next page, it's clicking even more. A pulley is a simple machine. It's a wheel with a rope around its rim. Pulleys lift and lower objects. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna check in, and I'm gonna ask myself, click or clunk? And I'm going to say that this is clicking based on the picture over here and what he has in his hand and the way that the sentences describe it. I have a pretty good understanding of what a pulley is. So I'm gonna continue reading because it was a click. 
An inclined plane is a ramp. A ramp is a simple machine. Now, as I'm reading this, it's not all making sense to me. Right? I might have never heard of an inclined plane before, but I do know what a ramp is. So I'm going to stop myself and just say that this is a clunk because I'm not really sure exactly what they're talking about here. An inclined plane. Well, I, I typically know a plane to be the thing that goes up in the sky and flies people from one place to another, but I don't think that's what they're talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the picture like I did before. But in this picture, I just see a little girl going down a water slide. I don't know that that really helps me understand what an inclined plane is. Right? It's a slide. Right? I'm going to go to the next page, though, and I'm going to see if the next page helps me better understand what they're talking about. Picture a board. One end is higher than the other. People move heavy things over inclined planes. Hmm. All right. So that is giving me a little bit of a better understanding. I'm imagining when there is a truck and a truck has something that they are delivering that's really heavy, like a refrigerator or a washing machine. And they use these ramps to get the washing machine or the refrigerator down off the truck or back into the truck. So now I have a better understanding that an inclined plane right, is a type of ramp. It is a ramp that helps move things from one place to another. And even a slide is an example of an inclined plane because it's moving a person from one place to another. So now my clunk has turned to a click. Wedges are simple machines. One end of a wedge is thick. The other is a thin point. A screw is a simple machine. Screws hold objects together. One example is a jar lid. So I feel on both of these pages, I could say the information is clicking because I understand what it's saying in both of those pages. A wheel and axle is a simple machine. It is a wheel that spins on a rod. That's how a doorknob works. And they have a picture of a Ferris wheel here. So I would also say that this is a click because I can understand what a wheel is and the axle, which might be a new word to me, is described as a rod. So another word for an axle is a rod. I can say that this is a click. Some scientists use simple machines. They ask questions and they look for answers. Right? Excellent. So <clears throat> this is a strategy that you can use and you should use anytime you're reading a nonfiction book. So when you're reading a nonfiction book and you get to a word or you read the page and you don't understand it, you shouldn't keep reading right? Because it's a clunk and you don't want to keep reading until it's a click. So you have to use all of your strategies to help you figure out how to turn that clunk into a click. Maybe you're going to use a picture. Maybe there's some other text features in the book that you can use, such as a glossary like back here. If I don't understand a word, I could go to the glossary and I can see if it's in the glossary. I can see if the glossary helps me understand what that word is. I can use other words. I can use the next page. So there are lots of different strategies I can use while reading if I hit a clunk. Right? So when you're reading today and every day, make sure you're keeping track and paying attention to whether or not you understand what you're reading. Does it click or does it clunk?